put the entire fuel loop rail system from another vehicle to show you what this looks like when it's fully removed. The injectors themselves attach to the loop rails themselves, and I call them loop rail because it just makes a full loop. The fuel comes in, the top goes into a splitter, goes down both ends, and feeds all six injectors. After all six injectors have been fed, it goes into a fuel pressure regulator, and the excess fuel is exited through here, through which would be the bottom line. I've got it upside down, but that's the bottom line. This fuel pressure regulator has a vacuum line on it, which allows you a certain amount of accelerator pump. It's as close as, as a fuel injection system gets to an accelerator pump based on fuel pressure. This is very important that this line not have any brakes in it, and it simply connects, I don't know if we can see it right here, it's right underneath the throttle shaft itself. Let's see where our throttle shaft moves. This is a direct vacuum port and supplies this. It will keep the, vac the, the fuel pressure down to approximately 34, 32 to 34 pounds, and when you stand on the throttle, it'll kick it up four to five pounds, just enough to push a little more fuel through the injector so you get that good jump after you kick the throttle open. The way it does that is that at idle or when you're cruising, there's a high vacuum signal inside the plenum, this whole area here, and this is being sensed against a spring-loaded diaphragm. At high idle, the vacuum diaphragm is pulled down. When you release the throttle, the spring pushes upward, changing, forcing more fuel into the injectors, allowing less to go back to the tank. It's not so important that you understand this system here. I've seen a thousand of these replaced and there's never been a problem. I've seen one, maybe two of these be bad in my entire experience. So the next time somebody tells you fuel pressure regulator, say, I don't think so. Probably is not your problem. Most of them you see will come in with a new pressure regulator on them. We figure the real problem out later. Okay. Once the fuel is being injected liquid wise, we've given it as much fuel pressure as necessary, the pump's working properly, the filter's not plugged, the system brings a good solid wall. And I like to call it a wall of fuel because fuel pressure is not necessarily fuel volume. Now it's important to realize you have to have both pressure and volume to make this happen. Now don't get too complicated with yourself as far as how you're going to measure fuel volume or how you're going to measure fuel pressure. Some of these uh, testing units are very expensive. Suffice it to say that if the car will start and run, you've got some fuel pressure. Not enough probably for you to uh, be particularly worried about, but for those of you who want to get very technical about it, we'll talk about building your own fuel pressure gauges. There aren't no sense in spending $200 for a gauge. It can be done for about $20.